of this year where you heard the collective grumble of loyal Honda owners all over the Philippines. What they believed to be a terrible injustice, the time of the jazz on Philippine shores had come to an end. And to be honest, who could blame them? In a span of 17 years, Honda sold over 25,000 units in the Philippines alone, making the three locally available generations a staple on our roads. The subcompact hatchback achieved cult status and seemed, well, destined for longevity with a peppy drive and generous amounts of space. I mean, really, I put a surfboard in it. Sadly, it wasn't to be. Now, it was argued that its sales of less than 400 units last year was because of the pandemic, granted. But even in the year pre-pandemic, the Jazz only sold 1,000 units. So in May of this year, they had decided that Unlike the Globe of Mall of Asia, the Jazz may never return. Not to leave hatchback fans wanting, Honda took their popular subcompact sedan and slapped on a fifth door. And I'm glad they did. This is the Honda City Hatchback RS. Do you need help purchasing your car insurance? Head on over to autodeal.com.ph slash car dash insurance. Here, you can compare prices and customize your insurance coverage from many of the Philippines' top providers. When you've selected the insurance that's best for you, simply fill out the application and complete the transaction with ease through Visa, MasterCard, GCash, GrabPay, or PayPal and receive your policy within the next business day. Get the best deal on insurance with AutoDeal. It was about a year ago today that Honda launched the seventh generation city sedan. Now we wanted to bring it back here today in its RS form, just so that we could get a clear picture of the differences between the two. You are looking at the cars head on and from that angle, you can barely tell them apart. In fact, save for the color of the wheels, everything from the B pillar forward is identical. Available only in the RS trim, the hatchback is sleek with a slim grille, DRLs and headlamps that flow toward the side like a woman's sultry cat eye, and fog lamps found down below, which are all LED. Identically dressed well, the hatch radiates a sporty look with a four carbon fiber chin and a blacked out honeycomb grille. While the sedan's LED tail lamps look kinda like a BMW, the one of the hatch looks more like an Audi. I would have rather seen larger wheels on the hatch. They work well on the sedan, it's the exact same size. But here, because the hatch gives off a more exuberant youth kind of a vibe, larger wheels would have actually looked better. But then again, I'm no engineer, and if you make those any bigger, it may actually alter the driving characteristics of the car. Underneath the hood, you will find the same 1.5 liter IV tech gasoline engine that produces 119 horses and 145 Nm meters of torque mated to an Earth Dreams CVT. And like the sedan, it's also a double overhead cam. Now all of that mumbo jumbo may not mean a lot to most of you, but some of you will definitely want to know that this still is capable of 9.5 kilometers per liter inside the city, 14 when it clears up, and it's capable of doing over 20 kilometers per liter on the highway. Now it's not exactly a conundrum, more of like a, huh? I'm baffled by those figures because this car is actually 20 kilos heavier than the sedan. And that's because despite being eight inches shorter, it's got door number five. Now when you open door number five, therein lays the biggest battle that consumers will come to grips with when deciding whether it's the hatch or the sedan that they should take home. Because in the sedan, you've got over 500 liters of space, but that's it, no more. But again, you're not gonna be compromising anybody in the passenger seat. Here in the hatch, you've got less than 300 liters of space, which really isn't much. However, it can convert to over 840 liters of space. Borrowing some identity and well versatility from none other than the Jazz itself, the seats smartly tuck and tumble, revealing some pretty impressive real estate. Seriously, you could fit that globe from all of Asia in here. They should have hidden it in here. It will also prove to be the hardest decision you'll have. A large but finite amount of space or modular but predominantly compact. Posture-centric still, the seats of the hatch suggest that you, well, sit upright as if you're having dinner with dignitaries. Thanks to the lumbar support found in the rear seat. Oh, sorry, not just in the rear seats, but in the seats all around the cabin. 
Toys include air vents found up front down below here. You've got two of them. And then you've got not one, but two power outlets there. You have a center armrest with two cup holders. And then you've got bottle holders on either door, which can carry a normal sized bottle. Forget about Jack's uh, Shrek sized bottle. Yeah, that doesn't fit. Now, it is vital to report that the space back here is exactly the same as it is in the sedan. Uh, this is my normal driving position, and just look at the amount of leg room and even the headroom that I have. Okay, maybe not so much the headroom, but the leg room is actually quite uh, impressive. The only difference is, is that in the sedan, this is much flatter. The center seat is much flatter. This kind of protrudes a little bit, which might be a problem if you have a third passenger. They may have to compromise. But really, in a sedan of this size, or rather in a hatch of this size, it's better off really for just two passengers in the back. If I've said it once, I don't mind saying it again. The steering wheel material of Honda Cities is absolutely awesome. Like it belongs in a much more expensive automobile. It's wrapped really well and it feels good to the touch. However, I would like to know from other Honda owners out there, those that have driven their cars 30, 40,000 kilometers already, how does the steering wheel feel inside your cars? Has it faded to a point that it's become already very slippery? I'm dying to know. Do let us know in the comments below. However, to continue, the 8-inch touchscreen infotainment has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which also doubles as your reverse camera. Air controls are found underneath, as well as charging points and a 12-volt socket. The instrument cluster has two analog gauges that flank a digital trip computer with a clock slash trip button reset out of trouble's way. There is also buttons on your steering wheel for your infotainment and your cruise, which is already a winner in my book. But in addition, there's also paddles. There is too one safety feature that I absolutely love and it well brings out the parent in me to be honest with you. Here I am inside the automobile, I start the engine, turn on the air conditioning and I'm trying to connect my phone via Bluetooth, whether to use just the Bluetooth function or Android Auto. And try as I may with the car stopped and in park, it won't allow me to connect until I do one simple thing. Amazing. It won't surprise you in the slightest that the driving characteristics of the hatch are exactly the same as that of the sedan. You would have known this already, so you're not really watching this video to try and figure out how it drives because you would have probably seen a review of the sedan. And if you haven't, click right here. So honestly, it's all about looks and space, isn't it? The sedan offers a more rudimentary design, a pattern you're accustomed to with the potential to be elegant in a subcompact. You also maintain a large boot at all times without compromising passenger space and or comfort in the very slightest. The hatch doesn't exactly march to its own beat, but it certainly stands apart in a sea of four doors. While the youth may be thought to be the main market for its looks, its flexibility, interior characteristics really show both sensibility and maturity. So the big question is, which one is it gonna be? Because it looks absolutely different and makes it work without trying too hard, I take the hatch over the sedan any day of the week and twice on Sunday, even if the hatch is more expensive by over 50,000 Philippine pesos with a price tag of 1,115,000 Philippine pesos. I wouldn't, however, shed the extra 20,000 pesos to get the white because, well, this silver gray looks absolutely great. It's not gonna quell the clamor of the jazz cult out there. No, definitely not because, well, honestly, it isn't a jazz. Thankfully, it isn't because it's a city and truly, it's in the league of its own. Mm -hmm. 